And now for the call of the 136 Belmont Stakes. Here's Tom Durkin. Smarty Jones takes his spot in post nine. Moments away from the start. Will he take his place in racing history? We'll see. They're off in the 136 Belmont. Smarty Jones got off to a good beginning today. Eddington not off particularly well. Rock Hard 10 is showing speed this afternoon. He's right up there with Smarty Jones who's on the outside. Purge comes through on the rail and Eddington will be on the outside of Smarty Jones as they move into the clubhouse turn. And then it's Cayman now who's running fifth and angles over toward the inside. Birdstone in between horses sixth, Royal Assault to seventh, Master David is reined in to run back in eighth position and long shot tap dancer trails the field. Purge is the leader, Rock Hard 10 right up on the pace today and Stuart Elliott trying to find a comfort zone there with Smarty Jones. They're in the clear on the outside third, not far behind Jerry Bailey and Eddington running along in fourth. Then they're followed by Royal Assault and Birdstone on the outside. The opening quarter went to 24 and one fifth seconds. The half 48 and three fifth seconds. The pace is fairly soft, and Smarty Jones has taken the lead as they begin their long journey down the Belmont backstretch. But he's not going to get a breather. It is Eddington to press him all the way, and Rock Hard 10 looms large just in behind the lead. He's only two lengths behind Smarty Jones now. There's a break of another two and a half lengths back, and Verge down toward the inside. He's working harder to be fourth. Birdstone's alongside him. The field now moving for the five. For long marker Smarty Jones a challenge on the inside from rock hard 10 there's five for longs to go just a minute from the wire and Smarty Jones has to hold on to that lead for just one minute more rock hard 10 is pressing him from the inside Eddington is working harder to stay within two lengths of the lead Birdstone commences a rally he's six lengths from the front Purge has nothing left then farther back it's Royal Assault Master David and Tap Dancer around the far turn and it's Smarty Jones he lets it out a notch to lead by a length and a half Birdstone is coming up on the outside. Rock Hard 10 is toiling. He's now three lengths behind. They're coming to the top of the stretch. Smarty Jones is a four-length lead. Birdstone is moving to be second on the outside. Rock Hard 10 is back to third. And Smarty Jones enters the stretch to the roar of 120,000. But Birdstone is going to make him earn it today. The whip is out on Smarty Jones. It's been 26 years. It's just one furlong away. Birdstone is an upside threat. They're coming down to the second Royal Assault came on to be third and so this triple crown remains vacated for 26 long years and this magical triple crown trail of Smarty Jones comes to a disheartening end in the final strides of the Belmont Stakes. Hearts broken again in the final strides at the Belmont. They ganged up on him. Everybody took a shot at him. And Birdstone finally got there in the closing strides. Remember Birdstone, one of the few horses that had raced over this Belmont Oval. He won the Champagne Sinks, the biggest race for two-year-olds here in New York last year. He had sort of fallen on hard times this spring. In the Kentucky Derby, he lost his shoe, didn't run well. But he came back to the track where he'd had his greatest success and upset Smarty's bid for the Triple Crown, the first loss in Smarty Jones' career. It's the first Belmont victory for Nick Zito, the New Yorker, in 12 tries after finishing second five times. And Donna is with Stuart Elliott on Smarty Jones. Stuart, I have to say I'm sorry for you, but I think all the viewers at home are going to be a little worried about Smarty Jones. Is he okay? He's fine. He's fine. I mean, he, he ran. He ran. I don't know. That other horse just come. Come and got him. Looked like you were pressed were out from both sides. Yes, a little bit on both sides, but my horse was still just dragging me and turned for home, and he went to run, and that horse just come and got us. If you could put your finger on anything that caused the defeat today, could you say? No. No. Horse racing. That's horse racing. Stuart, I'm sorry about it, but he'll, he'll live to fight again. Thank you. All right, Donna, the mile and a half of the Belmont Stakes, the test of a champion. Crestfall and Stuart Elliott, and they didn't let him have it easily. They tested him every step of the way, and it was Birdstone who made a huge move. You could see him coming on the backstretch into the turn for home, and Birdstone, you know he loves this Belmont track in the famous 
colors of the Whitney stable. Mary Lou Whitney, the owner. Her late husband, C.V. Whitney, one of the great scions of the American turf. And Smarty Jones, for the first time in his nine career races, walks back without tasting victory. And Donna is with winning jockey Edgar Prado on Birdstone. Edgar, this is reminiscent of 2002. Sarava unseated. War, Admir or, I'm sorry, War Emblem's bid for the Triple Crown. You're back. Yes, and I want to say thanks to God, thanks to my family, and thanks to all the connections. And I'm very sorry that for Jason, uh, Mr. Service, and all the connections for Smarty Jones. But I had to do my job, and that's what I'm paying for. I get paid for. I'm sure you're happy to win the race, but it, I can sense a touch of remorse in your voice for the connections with Smarty Joe. Especially because I know Elio for a long time. He's a good friend, good rider, good person, and he deserves it. And I, but this is part of the business, and I'm very sorry that it has to be me. Edgar, let's give Birdstone his due. This was a very, very precocious two-year-old, but he has not shown up much this year. So tell me, how did he finally get it to put together on Belmont Day? Well, Nick did a super job. He took it back to Saratoga, where he's very happy over there. He trained very slightly, and uh, he bring the horse 100% right. Finally, we, ha we have a nice dry track, Belmont one for one. So everything, everything worked out beautiful. At what point did you think you had the race won? Well, when I uh, passed the half mile pole, I haven't really hit my horse, and he started picking them up, so I don't have a chance to even get second or win the race. And like that, I win the race. Congratulations. What are you going to tell Nick, Nick when you get back? He was 11 and 0 going into this race. He finally gets his, his first Belmont win. Well, don't change it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Congra congratulations, Edgar. We go to Mike Battaglia. Thanks, Donna. With Nick Zito. Nick, this is the one you wanted. You've wanted this Belmont for a long time. You got it today. How you feeling? I feel great. We got it for the right people. You know, the Whitney's and the farmers are great. And what could I say? We finished third with Royal Assault, too. This was incredible. How do you feel about beat? There's John Service. John. John Service just came in and congratulated Nick Zito. Nick, that was really a touch of class right there. Oh, he's a class guy. That really he's is. He's a class guy. And he brought the sport where it should be. And Smarty Jones will always be one of the most famous horses ever. He's got his own niche, and really it was cool. But Mary Lou Whitney pulled through with her husband, John, and my great staff. Thank you, Nick. And everybody. Thanks, Nick. we got to go to Kenny. Thank he's you. with John. Thanks, Nick. Kenny. Thanks, Mike. Uh, John, you just went over and congratulated Nick Zito. What were your thoughts as they turned for home in that, and it looked like Smarty Jones was pulling away? Well, I was a little concerned. It just didn't look like, you know, the, the one thing I was really concerned about. It just didn't look like he settled as good as he had in his previous races, and, uh, you know, I was worried about that the whole three weeks, and, and it obviously came to, came to hand. With about a, 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 probably a mile to go in the race, he got the challenge from Rock Hard 10, then he started to settle it and pull away. Were you feeling better at that time? To be very honest with you, I wasn't feeling good down the backside. He just didn't look like he was settling like he had, and, and I was really concerned about that. You kept the same routine coming into the day. Was this basically the same routine? Did he feel good this morning? Did you feel confident when you walked him over here? I felt very good. You know, the one thing I was worried about the whole time in between the Preakness was, you know, him just being too sharp, and uh, obviously I couldn't get him settled enough. I was up there in the box with you just after the race. You, you turned around. And Mr. Chapman said something to you. Could you tell us what uh, you two briefly talked about? Um, he asked me who won it, and to be honest with you, I don't know what we even went on after that. I was watching my horse. As far as this whole run for yourself, I remember talking in Arkansas with you just before the Arkansas Derby, just before you made this uh, fabulous run. When you look back, any emotions running through your mind in those final strides? Yeah, you know, I mean, it uh, it hurt, but hell, we had a we had a really good run and. Uh, and we're going to put our heads down. We're proud. And as far as uh, the family, I believe you said a couple of things to your sons that were around you and your wife as well right after Birdstone uh, finished just uh, in front at the wire. What did you say to them? I told them that, uh, you know, we, we did a good job and, uh, you know, don't put your head down. Don't be upset. We did a good job. Don't forget that. And you seem like a man that uh, still felt very comfortable and, and after the race that, you know, you had your horse ready to come in here. Yeah, you know, my, my horse ran a race. I mean, he ran a very good race. He just, I think what really hurt us was the fact that he didn't settle. You know, he got a lot of pressure early. Um, he kind of drugged Stu to the lead, where before he just settled off the pace really nice. And, I, you know, that when they turned down the backside, I was concerned. John, thanks for your time. Thank you, Kenny. He's been a very gracious winner and certainly gracious here in defeat, rushing over to shake hands with Nick Zito right after the race. Tom? All right, Kenny. John Service indeed has been uh, handling all this success with... 
grace and class. And there's Edgar Prado. Can you be sad after winning the biggest race of your career? Seemed like it when Donna talked to him. Let's look at the prices. Birdstone went off at 36 to 1. Paid $74, $14.860. Smarty, $330 and $260. Royal Assault was third and paid $610. The Exacta, $139. And you saw the other prices. The White Carnations for the Belmont Stakes win on Birdstone will have the full race replay when we return to Belmont Park. Bob Newmeyer, trackside of Stuart Elliott, to watch it with us. Our Computer Associates race replay of the Belmont Stakes. Smarty Jones breaking on the outside, post position nine. And who better to talk about it than the man himself? Stuart, tell us about the break and the early part of the race. Well, my horse broke very good, and I just, you know, tried to get him over just a little bit and slow the pace down. I actually let a couple horses come up running on the inside of me because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my horse to relax and slow down, which he did. Uh, we had a good trip. I, I had plenty of horse the whole way. When I asked him, he, he went to running for me down the lane. We, we just got run down. All right, you have uh, you have rock hard ten between horses and purge on the lead. And at this point, I guess you're committed to go three wide at this juncture. Yes, I, I wasn't really concerned about saving a lot of ground. The outside seems to be good. Uh, that I was just main concern was having my horse relaxed, which which he was. All right, now purge is going to back out, and now rock hard ten. And you start volleying, and now you've got Eddington with more pressure points coming up on the outside. Eddington, Eddington forced me a little bit here, but still, I mean, I'm still sitting very comfortably. Um, you know, I'm still in pretty good shape. Uh, you know, uh, my horse, <laughs> I thought he ran his race. He just, you know, unfortunately, he didn't win. All right, you've got a long way to go from here. Rock High Ten's trying to battle back on the inside. Solis makes his actual second move on the inside. Bailey is furiously pumping Eddington. He looks like he's finished. You're looking around over your right shoulder, probably still feeling pretty good about yourself. I'm still sitting with some horse. You know, I'm trying to just be patient and wait, and uh, which, you know, they forced me a little bit, but my horse was still very comfortable. All right, now you've put, I believe, Rock Hard 10 away at this point. Eddington's done. Purge is done. Rock Hard 10 is done. And you're sailing around at this point we are worrying about something from the back well I, I thought I was pretty confident uh, you know I had some horse still I was still sitting and uh, my horse responded he, he never stopped running you think you were a winner at this point I thought I was pretty confident I said the horse is gonna have to really come running to beat me now you're looking around you're looking over your shoulder and here is the ominous specter of Edgar Prado and Birdstone who won the champagne here last year as a two-year-old and now he's going to engage you in mid-stretch. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I've seen him coming pretty strong, and my horse was trying. We just couldn't hold him off. The early jousting with the other horses on both sides of you, Purge, Rock Card 10, Eddington, ultimately perhaps cost you this race? I would say more so just the mile and a half. A mile and a half, and there's the winner, Birdstone. Stewart, congratulations on one great ride in this Triple okay. Crown. Thank you. A gracious Stuart Elliott. Tom, back to you. All right, Bob, and thanks to Stewart for sticking around despite his disappointment to go over the race with us in that Computer Associates race replay. 